so good afternoon students so in previous class so we are discussing about the <coughs> first unit okay so in first unit you have to know what are the introduction total introduction to the measurements okay so what is measurement okay so and what is the instrument okay so what are the essential requirements for a instrument okay so if supposed to uh, working of the instrument okay what are the essential tasks okay and types of instrument so all are discussed in the previous unit so next second unit is nothing but bridges so in bridges here you have to discussing the dc bridges and ac bridges bridge okay so these bridges is used to measure the resistance value okay so in total second unit you have to studying about how to measure the resistance value okay so that resistance will be measured by ac bridges and dc bridges dc resistance is find out by use in dc circuits the resistance is find out by using the dc bridges and in ac bridges the resistance is find out by using the ac bridges okay see first of all what is a bridge okay so first we are knowing about what is a bridge see if the electrical components are arranged in the form of a bridge or ring structure then that electrical circuit is called a bridge okay so whenever electrical components what are the electrical components resistors okay inductors capacitor batteries all are these electrical components okay if the electrical components are arranged in the form of a bridge okay here you can arrange in the form of a one bridge or a ring structure okay so then that electrical circuit is called a bridge okay they are classified into two types based on the voltage signal with which they are operated okay so that means what what the supply you have to given okay here you have to two supplies ac supply dc supply if suppose we are giving dc supply to the that bridge that is called dc bridges and ac supply that bridge is called ac bridge okay what is the bridge whenever the electrical components are arranged in the form of a bridge or ring structure that electrical circuit is called a bridge see this is the general arrangement of a dc bridge okay so here in dc bridge here you have to connect a four electrical components here what are the electrical component resistor here you have to take four resistors r1 r2 r3 r4 okay and so out of this okay so um uh, to see here you have to take a four resistors is connected in the form of a bridge so in between these uh, two any mid of the two points here you have to connect a galvanometer okay see galvanometer is nothing but it gives a deflection value okay whenever galvanometer will be deflect at that time the bridge whenever uh, the bridge will start working okay so whenever there will be a null deflection in the bridge at that time null deflection means zero deflection at that time the bridge is in a balanced condition okay here by taking four points a b c d okay so by taking four points here you can joining a four, here r1 and r2 are fixed values constant values and r r4 is um, r3 and these three are so fixed values r3 is a changing variable resistance these two are fixed resistance r1 and r2 are the fixed resistances r3 is a variable resistance and the r4 and these three are the Mm, these two are known resistance known fixed resistance this r3 is nothing but see here you can i indicate the arrow okay that arrow will indicates the change in the resistance r3 is a variable resistor and r4 is a unknown resistor that means the resistor which is to be find out okay so that is either in any place you have to connect the unknown resistance value okay so in a bridge in any one of the so the these these are called these uh, branch is called arms these four a b c d c d d a okay a b b c c d d a these are called the arms of the bridge okay so uh, by connecting the points a and c to the voltage supply here you have to giving a dc supply 
that's why this is called a dc bridges okay here by you have to taking a four resistance values and you have to arrange in the arms of arms of the bridge okay to form a bridge in between points b and d here you have to connect a galvanometer in between points a and c here you have to connect a one voltage supply c ac bridges so dc bridges you have to take the resistance so in ac so what is the equivalent to the resistance impedance okay here you have to connect a four impedances z1 z2 z3 z4 see here for, to know the deflection in the bridges here you have to use either galvanometer detectors detectors are nothing but headphones galvanometer is also detector okay so that's why here you can indicate the detector so here also same in between three uh, in between two points b and d here you have to connect a one detector in between points a and c here you have to connecting a one ac supply okay so that's why this is called as a bridge here also you have to know z1 and z2 are the known impedances that means fixed impedances value z3 is a variable impedance and z4 is a unknown impedance value c basic ac bridge structure okay so that is c you have to taking a four arms of the bridge okay in between arm a and b you have to connect a z1 in between arm a and d you have to connect a z2 impedance in between arm b and c you have to connect a z3 impedance in between uh, points c and d you have to connect a z4 impedance okay these are the currents i1 i1 i2 i3 and i4 are the current flowing through the corresponding impedances so every impedance having a voltage drop values okay that voltage drop across ab here you can assume that value will be e1 across bc you have to assume e3 across cd you have to assume e4 and across ad you have to assume e2 here you have in between points b and d here you have to connect a one detector okay so in between points a and c you have to giving a ac supply okay here you can indicate the voltage e c so c here the total operation will be consider of the bridge will be taken in whenever the bridge is in balanced that means the bridge in equilibrium position c for the bridge to be balanced the current through the detector must to be zero okay so whenever the bridge will be balanced previously i am says that okay the galvanometer will shows the null deflection that means the current go current through the detector here detector means nothing but galvanometer or headphones anything okay detector must to be zero that requires the potential requires vbd be zero okay that means see uh, in previous slide see that means the, the potential difference between b and d will be zero at that time uh, whenever the voltage drop between b and b zero at that time the galvanometer the current flows through the galvanometer will be zero okay at that time here the detector will shows the null deflection okay so so that means vab equal to vad see always vab equal to vad so whenever these two currents will be equal so at that time here the bridge will be balanced whenever they will got a voltage difference between vab is equal to the voltage difference between the vad okay so at that time the bridge will be balanced okay so at that time vab equal to vad here uh, already you can assume the voltage drop across points a and b that is in the arm the voltage drop is even in the arm ad that means in between points a and d here you have to assume the, the voltage value will be e2 applying ohm's law e1 is nothing but voltage drop okay ohm's law is nothing but v equal to ir here in place of resistance we have to take the impedance so that's why here you can write e1 means i1 into z1 e2 means i2 into z2 okay so at balance whenever balance condition the bridge is in balanced condition see already i am says that 
uh, I so what? So whenever the bridge is balanced, here no current will flow through the detector. So at that time, what is the current flowing from AB? That current will be same flowing through the BC. So that's why at that time I1 is coming to I3. That at that time I1 is equal to I3. Okay. So at that time you can indicate. I1 equal to I3. So at that time here you can write E. Okay. According to the um, current divider rule, you can write I1 current value. You can want V by V by J or V by R. In place of R here you have the you have impedances value. So that's why I1 equal to I3 is equal to E by J1 plus J3. Okay. So so generally you have uh, see I2 equal to I4. That is equal to E by J4. Similarly. So similarly, I1 equal to I3, I2 equal to I4. At that time, you can write E by J2 plus J4. Okay. So now see, now you have you know I1 value, I2 value. Now substitute in this equation. These two values, I1 and I2 values, are substituted in this equation above equation. So at that time, here you can get see substituting the value of I1 and I2. So at that time. Um, I1 and I2. So at that time, in place of I1, here you can write E by Z1 plus Z3. In place of I2, here you can write E by Z2 plus Z4. Okay. So here E E same values. E E will be cancelled. Finally, you can get Z1 by Z1 plus Z3. That is equal to Z2 by Z2 plus Z4. So you have to cross multiply. So whenever you have put this one side and this one is this side. So whenever Z1 into Z2 plus Z4, Z2 into Z1 Z2 into Z1 plus Z3. So when you have how multiply Z1 Z2 plus Z1 Z4. Here also Z1 Z2 Z2 Z3. So up at that time this term this term will be cancelled. Remaining here this in this side. Okay, this left hand side you have Z1 Z4 and this side you have only Z2 Z3. So this is equal. This equation is a balanced for a balanced AC bridge equation. This is the basic equation of a Bridge balance equation for the AC bridges. Similarly, if suppose you have so first you have to see here AC bridges. If suppose you have to see the DC bridges in place of you only you have to change the resistors. So in place of Z1 Z4 you can get R1 R4 that is equal to R2 R3. Okay, this is the general basic equation for the bridge balancing condition. So in all bridges, all AC bridges by considering this bridge balance equation, basic equation you have to find out the unknown. Resistance values. Okay, so so AC bridges means AC bridges are used for to find out the unknown capacitance. Okay, so unknown inductance. Okay, so DC bridges are used to find out the unknown resistance value. Okay, that means in our second unit by using these bridges, AC bridges and DC bridges, we have to find out the unknown resistance value, unknown inductance value, and unknown capacitance value. See. If suppose you have to take the polar form, polar form means you have to know z equal to z at the rate of theta. Polar form is nothing but it represents the sum angle. Okay, that means uh, impedance uh, AC quantity means compulsory is having a sum angle. Why? Because AC supply is in the form of a sinusoidal wave. Sinusoidal wave means compulsory it existing in sum angle theta. Okay, so at that time. Let us now consider impedance in this polar form Z equal to Z at an angle of theta. Okay, so here Z represents the here Z represents the magnitude and the theta represents the phase angle of complex impedance. Okay, so and here theta represents the phase angle. So the above equation can be so in previously you can get bridge balance equation is Z1 Z4 equal to Z2 Z2 Z3. Okay, here you can write all terms in the form of a polar form. So at that time here you can get Z1 at an angle of theta 1, Z4 at an angle of theta 4, Z2 at an angle of theta 2, Z3 at an angle of theta. So here what happened? So multiplication of any two angles will become sum of the two angles. See. See. So here impedance parameters. Will get multiplied and angles will be added. So at that time it will become Z1 Z4 at an angle of the two phase angles will be added. Okay, at that time the two phase angles will becomes theta1 plus theta4 is equal to Z2 Z3 at an angle of theta2 plus 
theta t. Okay, if suppose you can take uh, magnitude will be separate, phase angle will be separate. At the time separately, you can write magnitude and phase angles. The equations will becomes at the time z1 z4 is equal to z2 z3. This condition in above equation is called the magnitude criteria. Okay, this totally is discussing about the magnitude of the um, bridges. So uh, theta at an angle of theta one plus theta four equal to theta two plus theta three. This condition is known as phase criteria. Okay. See. Next, you can see the measurement of resistance. Okay, resistance. Okay, so the classification of resistance based on its measurement as follows. Okay, the resistance measurement is depending upon this following ones. That means here resistance we have to divide into three resistance: low resistance. Okay, so medium resistance, high resistance. Okay, so low resistance, medium resistance, high resistance. That means. If suppose we have to find out the measure the resistance value that is less than one ohm, equal or less than one ohm, that resistance is called as low low resistance. If suppose the the resistance which is to be measured is lies in between one ohm to hundred kilo ohms, okay, the resistance value lies in between one ohm to hundred kilo ohms. So at the time that resistance is called as medium resistance, okay. Whenever the resistance value greater than hundred kilo ohms. At that time, that resistance value is called as high resistance. So here also we have to different bridges to find out the low resistance. Okay, to find out the high resistance as well as the to find out the medium resistance. Okay, coming to the first of all, you have to see measure measurement of low resistance. Which methods and which bridges is used for the measurement of the low resistance? See the low resistance can be measured by the following methods. Those are ammeter voltmeter method, Kelvin's double bridge method, potentiometer method. Okay, so here mainly you have to main important one is Kelvin's double bridge. That means here the low low resistance will be measured by using the two methods, ammeter voltmeter method and potentiometer method, and also by using the one bridge that is nothing but Kelvin's double bridge. This is very very important. This is the one of the bridge to find out the low resistance value. Low resistance means equal to one ohm or less than one ohm. Okay, the resistance value which is equal to one ohm or less than one ohm, that uh, uh, resistance is called as the low resistance. The bridge which is used for the measurement of low resistance is nothing but the Kelvin's double bridge. Okay, so here also ammeter and voltmeter method. See, in this arrangement of ammeter voltmeter method, first here. Uh, we have to connect the ammeter on the uh, low side. That means the value which is to be found here, the ammeter will be connected across the supply side. Okay, In, from these two, so that means here R X is nothing but the, the unknown resistance. Unknown means the value which is to be found out. Okay, the resistance value which is to be found out is placed in the place of R X. Okay, R X is nothing but unknown resistance value. That means that value now we have to find out. Okay, so now here, so here, so this side resistor side in this in series with resistor here we have to connect the ammeter and in parallel we have to connect the voltmeter. Here in this way in second diagram here we have to connect the ammeter on the supply side and in parallel to the resistor which is to be measured is connect the voltmeter. So okay, in this two diagrams, okay, these two diagrams are nothing but the connections of. Ammeter and voltmeter method. Okay, from these two diagrams, you can see how to find out the unknown resistance value, unknown low resistance value. See, first of all, here the supply current is I T. Here the current will flowing through the ammeter is known as I X. Here I T. Here you can assume I V and I X. Okay, these are the currents. Okay, so now. Okay. Listen.
okay this is the ammeter and voltmeter method okay so in ammeter and voltmeter method here you have to find out the resistance value resistance is nothing but r equal to v by i okay at that time you have to take in this current v across the resistance you have to take the voltage v value and current i value so here you have to take the uh, rx equal to v by iv plus ix here you have to take only ix okay but here you have to take the iv plus ix okay so that is normal general diagrams all of you know so next one is what kelvin's double bridge okay so this is the one of the bridge to find out the a measurement of the low resistance okay so see kelvin double bridge okay this is the arrangement of a kelvin double bridge it consisting of two ratio arms okay the p and q is the first ratio of the arm p and q. see here you have it consisting of the two ratio arms that means p and q are called as the first ratio arm small p and q is the here small p and q is the second ratio arm okay this is generally bridge okay so you have to know a b c d actually bridge but you have to extend the two ratio arms okay so and here you have to giving a dc voltage okay so to find out the resistance value to find out the resistance value you have to use the dc bridge okay and here the kelvin's double bridge is used to find out the measurement of the low resistance value okay so it consisting of a two ratio arms p and q okay so and it having this non p and q is the second ratio arm okay so here you have to place this one is a uh, another r, r and s see here uh, under balanced condition zero current flows through the galvanometer what i am says that when when uh, whenever the bridge is in balanced condition so at that time the zero current will flow through the galvanometer the potential difference between point and bay is equal to the voltage drop between points em and dc here at that whenever the bridge is balanced condition at that time the potential difference across uh, a and b that means this one ab is equal to the potential difference across e am ad that means in between these three points and between these two points you have to same potential difference okay so at that time you can write eab eab equal to you can write p by p plus q into eab that is nothing but the need eab eab equal to you can write p so eab find out which one p so p by the for this opposite you have to by using the here you can write by using the voltage divider rule okay according to the voltage divider rule for p you have to write the uh, opposite side that is nothing but p by p plus q so p plus q and eac okay so that means ac is connected to here a so that means by using voltage divider rule okay so in uh, circuits you can, you, you can know all of you okay okay so at that time here you can write eac okay so eac okay here you can write eac you can uh, get how eac see eac is nothing but voltage uh, uh, difference between points uh, that means potential difference between points a and c see you have to observe a is here in between c so if suppose uh, you have to reconstruct this one here r and s are in parallel okay that's why parallel connection of these two resistor see here small p plus p plus q is in series and uh, in, in uh, so these p plus q is in parallel with small r 
okay so that means so here see in between these a and p see you have to connect also p and q here the p and q is all parallel e this so this is also resistance okay this is a small r is nothing but wire resistance okay so uh, so here p and q are in uh, uh, p and p and q are is in series and this series combination is in parallel with r okay so at that time here you can write these uh, p plus q is parallel with r so at that time the parallel combination will becomes p plus q into r divided by p plus q plus small r okay so and here in between points a and c you have also resistances r and s so voltage difference is nothing but ev equal to ir that means here you have to know so the current in between points a and c and the resistance value okay you have to add these all resistance okay what are the resistances present in between points a and c what are the resistance present here the series combination of r and s and here these are linked with second ratio of small p and q okay r that means the series combination of p plus q is in parallel with the r so at that time here you can write c i into r plus s in plus p plus q into r by p plus q plus r okay similarly eamd eamd is nothing but the voltage difference between points a m d so here also same okay so here also we have to so e equal to c e a m d here also you have the You, you have to know the voltage drop so here also you have to flow the current i value and here also you have to r okay and here also p plus q who oh, in r combination is there parallel combination okay so here also you have to apply in the voltage divider rule okay so when you have apply the voltage divider rule at that time here you can get eam equal to i into r plus p by so p plus q into p plus q into r by p plus q plus r so this is the parallel combination of p plus q into r so at that time here this term this term will be cancelled so at that time here you can get uh, see here in eap you have um, small r uh, sorry here r and s values are very very small compared to
okay so this will i will kelvin's double bridge i will explain in next class okay so first so to find out the low resistance value here you have to use the uh, three way, three men. what are those our uh, ammeter voltmeter method kelvin's double bridge as well as the potentiometer method okay these are discussed in next class these three bridges uh, these three methods okay so uh, next you have medium resistance okay first you have to know the methods okay so what are the methods okay and what are the bridges used for the either low resistance and medium resistance and bridges in later class we are discussing okay so for measurement of low resistance here you are using the ammeter voltmeter method kelvin's double bridge method potentiometric method okay for measurement of low resistance sorry medium resistance for measurement of medium resistance here you have to also use ammeter voltmeter method here also use the ammeter voltmeter method substitution method and wheaton bridge method okay these are the three that means the bridge which is used to find out the medium resistance is wheaton bridge see in every time in examination point of view from kelvin's double bridge from wheaton bridge so any one question will be coming okay so the bridges which are used for the measurement of medium resistance is nothing but the wheaton bridge okay the bridges so you Uh, so the measurement uh, so medium resistance means the resistance in between 1 ohm to 100 ohms okay the resistance in between 1 ohm to 100 ohms is called as medium resistance okay and here you are using the and you are using ammeter voltmeter method substitution method okay wheaton bridge method okay these are the uh, three methods used for the measurement of medium resistance okay uh, for measurement of high resistance okay for measurement of high resistance here you are using the three method those are direct deflection method loss of charge method megger method okay megger method okay so these are the so here you have to use the no bridge you are using the only methods okay by using the three methods you have to find out the a high resistance value high resistance is nothing but above 100 ohms okay above 100 ohms you are using the to find out the resistance value above the 100 ohms the resistance value is called as high resistance those are nothing but the direct deflection method loss of charge method megger method okay so these are the three methods for use uh, are used to find out the uh, measurement of the high resistance okay see here so uh, for um, for find out the resistance value okay here are using the bridges okay those are nothing but the d you are using the dc bridges okay so here the measurement of resistance is according to the uh, types of resistance you have here you have to three resistance what are those low resistance medium resistance high resistance low resistance is nothing but the resistance in between uh, the resistance uh, uh, in between uh, less than 1 or uh, equal to 1 ohm that is nothing but the low resistance okay medium resistance is nothing but the resistance in between 1 ohms to 100 ohms that, is, that resistance is called medium resistance and the resistance above 100 ohms that resistance is called high resistance to find out the low resistance here you have to use the ammeter voltmeter method okay so next one is kelvin's double bridge and you have to that one is potentiometric method and by using the medium resistance here also you have to use the ammeter voltmeter method wheaton bridge method okay as well as the uh, substitution method okay similarly for find out in the high resistance value you have used the loss of charge method Uh, okay see here you have to discuss you have to write okay so to find out the high resistance value here are you here you are using the 
uh, to find out the resistance value you have to high resistance value here you have to use the direct deflection method okay so loss of charge method and megger method okay so direct deflection method okay first you can see the direct deflection method okay see here in direct deflection method you have to the galva see the galvanometer g measures the current ir between the conductor and metal sheet here this is a one conductor and this is, you have to use the one metallic sheet that means one metallic like plate okay so to this one you have to connect in a through one insulating material here you have to place a one conductor okay so here you have to place a one conductor so this conductor carrying the current okay for this conductor you are using the galvanometer g so here the galvanometer g measures the current ir okay between the conductor and metal sheet okay so the insulation resistance of the cable so here the cable uh, insulating resistance you can assume v by ir okay that means so what is the voltage so here you have to giving the dc voltage v so and the insulation resistance of this total cable so this is total one metallic cable cable is nothing but wire okay so cable r equal to v by ir so at that time the cables without metal sheet can be tested in similar way here the cable is immersed in a saline water for 24 hours at constant temperature see here the cable is immersed in a, a saline water okay so 24 hours at constant temperature the water and tank act as a return path for the flow of current see here what you can name one tank in this tank you can place a saline water saline water is nothing but glucose water okay so water and you have to immerse this cable the insulation resistance of the cable is initially what v by ir okay so whenever you have see so here you have to find out the resistance value so you have to immerse uh, so you have to place a cable okay through this so this is the again arrangement okay uh, galvanometer voltmeter supply okay whenever you have to giving the supply at that time the galvanometer will shows null deflection at that time you have to find out this cable resistance value is measured by using so whenever galvanometer will shows the null deflection at that time the total current will flows through this cable so at that time the cable uh, resistance is given by the r equal to v by r why because here you have to find this is uh, this uh, put in the saline water means whenever you have put, put uh, direct deflection Uh, so whenever you have put in the saline water or any water okay pure water at that time the insulation resistance of the cable will be increases at that time there will be a, there will be a null deflection will be easily get in the galvanometer okay that's why this total arrangement is immersed in a one water tank okay so here you have to take the saline water okay so this is about the direction deflection method okay these all the methods are again discussed in next class okay so first here the dc bridges are used to find out the resistance here you have to resistance is three types what are those low resistance medium resistance high resistance okay the low resistance is used the low resistance is nothing but the resistance in between one uh, one more equal to one ohm and less than one ohm uh, and that resistance will be called as a that resistance will be called as low resistance whenever the resistance in between the 1 uh, ohm to the 100 ohms that resistance will be called as medium resistance whenever the resistance is above 100 ohms that resistance is called high resistance okay and you have to see the what are the methods okay and bridges to find out these resistance value and all are discussed in later class okay so next AC bridges. See, AC the inductance and capacitance can measured by using the AC bridges. Already I am says that. Okay, so the inductance and the capacitance is find out by using the AC bridges, and the resistance is find out by using the DC bridges. Okay, here also there are different bridges. Okay, for the measurement of inductance as well as the measurement of capacitance. 
see the inductance okay to find out the inductance so these all bridges are ac bridges okay the bridges which is used to find out the inductance and the capacitance value that bridges are called as ac bridges the bridges used for the measurement of resistance is called as dc bridges okay so the inductance okay so inductance is nothing but l okay so the inductance can be measured by the following methods okay that means following bridges see here in our so there are different bridges ac bridges for uh, different ac bridges to find out the inductance value but here uh, here in our subject we have to inductance can be measured by the following methods the following bridges here you have to mention only three bridges maxwell's inductance bridge maxwell's inductance and capacitance bridge that means by using this bridge at a time you have to find out the inductance and capacitance value also so next one is hayes bridge okay so these are the three bridges are used to find out the inductance value and anderson bridge owens uh, sorry owens bridge okay so these are the bridges in our subject you have to these five bridges maxwell inductance bridge maxwell's inductance capacitance bridge hayes bridge anderson's bridge owens bridge these are the five bridges are used to find out the inductance value okay so similarly to find out the capacitance see measurement of capacitance okay to find out the capacitance value okay to find out the capacitance value so capacitance can be measured by by the following following bridges those are the dsartis bridge sherin bridge weins bridge okay by using the dsartis bridge sherin bridge weins bridge see by using the weins bridge you have to find out the frequency okay so at a time you have to find out the unknown frequency value okay these are these bridge and say share share in bridge is used to find out the measurement of unknown capacitance okay so bridge so first of all bridge bridge is nothing but whenever you have the arrange the electrical components in a bridge format or a ring structure that is forming a bridge okay so here you have to two bridges dc bridges ac bridges dc bridges is used to find out the resistance value unknown resistance value ac bridges is used to measure the unknown inductance and capacitance value okay so in dc bridges uh, uh, you have so dc bridges are used to find out the resistance value here i am say sir so here the resistance you have to classify three types what are those low resistance medium resistance high resistance to find out the low resistance you have to use ammeter voltmeter method kelvin's double bridge method potentiometric method okay similarly to find out the medium resistance here we are using the ammeter voltmeter method weston bridge okay the one of the bridge is used to find out the medium resistance is nothing but the weston bridge as well as here you can use the substitution method okay so next uh, third one is high resistance to find out the high resistance here you are using the direct deflection method loss of charge method megger method okay so that means megger is also called as mega ohm bridge method okay so these are the three methods so next ac bridges so ac okay ac bridges is nothing but it defined out the ac components ac components ac components are electrical components are mainly inductance capacitance okay here the ac bridges are used to find out the inductance and capacitance value okay so to find out the unknown inductance unknown inductance value here we have maxwell's inductance bridge maxwell's inductance capacitance bridge hayes bridge anderson's bridge owens bridge okay these are the five bridges is used to measurement of the unknown inductance okay see in all bridges in previously first you are seeing the bridge balanced equation what are, what is this z1 z4 equal to z2 z3 that is the bridge balance equation for any bridge ac bridge uh, so by uh, different bridges means you have to different connections so depending upon this uh, so in z1 z4 place what parameters you have in different bridges those are right and you have to derive the equations so that is the bridge balance equation for the ac bridges and similarly the bridge balance equation for ac bridges is r1 r2 is equal to sorry r1 r4 equal to 
R2, R3. That means in place of only Z1 and Z4, here you can write R1, R4. That means impedances are replaced by only the resistances values. Okay, that is only difference. Okay, so uh, and here the capacitance is find out by using mainly shearing bridge, DSRT's bridge. Wien's bridge in Wien's bridge you have also find out the frequency and capacitance. So Wien's bridge is the one of the bridge to find out the unknown frequency values. Okay, so next in next class in a uh, Okay, so in next class, I will explain the all bridges. So in next class, first, uh, you can explain the measurement of low resistance. So, and so in next class, you can discussing about the measurement of the low resistance and medium resistance bridges. Okay, so to find out the measurement of low resistance, here you have to use the, the ammeter voltmeter method. Okay, as well as the um, Kelvin's double bridge method. Okay, so next one is what potentiometry method. So these all methods are discussed in the next class.